Hey guys, how you doing? So, no matter where I see it on the internet, whether it's feminists that are speaking or meninists, there seems to be this interesting phenomenon of conflict. Not just debate and discussion, but from both sides, trolling. I'm making this video to talk about this battle of the sexes, or really this war of the sexes, that seems to still be continuing on. And the places where I see it playing out, I see these incredible opportunities for us to discuss with one another where we have disagreements. But instead of discussing this with one another and trying to build allies and persuade people to understand us better, we tend to argue and fight and become incredibly conflictual and also often trollish. The reason why I find this interesting is because I would imagine that if this cause was so important to you, you would want to make sure all the effort you put in to changing things would be based around the idea of changing people's minds and persuasion. And I've said it before, but I'm not really for labels in general. Sure, debate can be healthy, but is arguing and pointing fingers and anger really persuading anybody? And I understand that some of these topics are worthy of anger because some of these topics are about people getting hurt. But are we speaking to help the person we're speaking to better understand our perspective? Or are we speaking to make ourselves feel better? Because the first is productive and I would say the second is just trolling. Sometimes a lighter version and sometimes a really hardcore version. When you're representing your cause and trying to get people to understand what you're saying, you're asking for someone to empathize with your perspective and your beliefs and your values. But the only way to get empathy is in fact to give it first. You have to stop to understand the person that you're speaking to in order to try to understand what you could be doing to help them understand it. But instead, it seems that a lot of times in these discussions that it is about arguing and saying the point that makes us feel good to say it out loud. Now, there are definitely times and places for us to just give a testimony about the way that something has made us feel or has impacted our lives, and that's really valuable. But is arguing, when we're debating, are we really trying to speak so that the other person understands us better? So let's look through some of these topics in which men and women tend to argue and fight and figure out where are we losing opportunities to empathize with one another. Let's start with the one thing that I feel like men and women argue about the most, sex. Call it obvious, call it ironic, but it's the one place where we come together as close as we physically can. And it is the one place where we have the most grievances, it seems, within romance, within sex, within sexual safety and consent and assault, and within sexual harassment, and even expectations and social norms within sex. What the argument tends to be is that women feel like they are mistreated a lot within sex and men feel like this is a generalization and they get hurt by it. Let's break down why is this a problem for us. First of all, the social norm is that men are not masculine unless they're having lots of sex, which would create this social petri dish of unhealthiness in which men are looking for sex with a woman for their own self-esteem and identity, which means they're probably not going to be thinking as much about her as if it were something that was just organic and natural and chosen purely for the sake of that connection. So then women end up feeling like they are a commodity or something that men feel entitled to having because they're looking for it because it's what their identity is built off of. I think one of the biggest issues that happens is feminists are looking to try to correct patriarchy and instead they end up talking about patriarchs and men. And it is neither just men or just women that are perpetuating either of these circumstances. All of this is a societal situation and a societal problem. All of these are problems within our culture and like I said, our norms. But because the experience is personal, we talk about these problems as if it is a person that is to blame. I think it would be safe to assume that meninism came out of feminism, that meninists are responding to feminists, saying that feminists are being short-sighted or even harsh. It's interesting to me that feminists don't see meninism 
as a big red flag that something is missing. As a disclaimer, I have a lot of respect for a lot of feminists, especially intersectional feminists, and any feminist that makes an effort to be against oppression for whomever it affects. Everyone knows that it's not just women that get sexually assaulted, and yet we're ignoring a lot of the victims who are men. Men aren't even allowed to cry. Why don't we see that as a huge burden that they are having to carry and worry about what the effect it is having on our culture and our relationships? I have noticed that a majority of the trolls that I interact with are young men and it's always anger that I'm getting trolled with. Sometimes argumentative, sometimes very violent. But what's interesting to me is we look at these people expressing immense anger and hate and violence and we judge them and think of them as less than because they're not being healthy. But if it's so clear that somebody is not healthy, why are we not worried about them? If somebody were sick, do we shun them? So feminists, why are you not asking yourself why are these men so angry? And why is the emotion that's generally shown, and in fact almost always the only emotion that's shown, anger? Could it possibly be that all the other emotions are misdirected into that one that is socially acceptable to express? That's a lot of different emotions that should be coming out in different ways and it's not getting to. Why are we not concerned for people that suffer like this? When you're about a cause like feminism, you're supposed to be about gender equality. But as women, the more rights we gain and the more freedom we gain, we should be trying to think about how to bring up everybody else with us. And if we leave men behind, our society is not going to progress any better than when women get left behind. I had one person comment on my video yesterday about his own experiences with sexual harassment and that because he's a man, when women sexually harass him and sometimes even gang up to sexually harass him, he can't do anything about it the way that a woman would react to do something about it because if he does, he's considered less masculine. We still live in a culture in which if a woman threatens a man, it's not socially acceptable for that man to defend himself. As women gain power, we have to be careful to not misuse it the way we believe that a lot of men have misused it in the past. We have to be careful not to become bullies like the ones we're trying to speak out against. Are we really trying to bring people closer to our perspectives? Or are we just fighting this fight because that's what we want to do? Are you trying to end the war? Or are you one of the people that's perpetuating it? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts. If you did, please click the like button below. Let me know that you liked it. If you would like to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button and come back again soon. Also, if you have any questions or comments or trolling that you would like to do, please leave it in the comment box below. And also, if there's any videos you would like me to do in the future or questions you would like me to address in the future in a different video, please let me know. I would love to know what kind of things you would like to see. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again soon.